All right. What's going on, everybody? My name is Junior, and I want to welcome you all to the Daily Digital Design Show. Uh, this show is all about learning about new technology that is shaping our ever-growing digital world. Um, and I want to just bring to you the latest top three articles that I found online. Uh, the first one is by Facebook, aka Meta, since they changed the name uh, back in, I want to say like November of 2021. Um, the second one comes from a little known game called Pokemon Go. I believe that came out, man, like the early 2000, 2008, 2010 or something like that. Um, well, actually, no, man, I think that came out. 2016 or something like that. It's, it's, it's been a while. I don't think it's been that long, <laughs> but it's been a while um, since Pokemon Go dropped. Uh, and then the last one, I'm not sure if many people have heard about Solana, uh, but Solana is coming out with some really, really, really big noise for the cryptocurrency world. So I really wanted to just go ahead and kind of get you all well informed of what's going on behind the scenes uh, so that you are not caught off guard, just like when the NFT became a really big thing. A lot of people were caught off guard by it. Uh, even back when cryptocurrency uh, became big, Bitcoin had been out since like 2008. Uh, but people are just now hearing about it more than a decade later, uh, which is just wild and crazy to me. So um, stay tuned and we'll be jumping right into it. All right. So as I have mentioned, the first article comes from Facebook, a.k.a. Meta. Uh, I myself still call them Facebook. Some people still call them Meta now, but hey, whatever. Um, this is a couple of screenshots of what they're talking about and what it looks like. But essentially, they're trying to be, I guess it seems a little bit more like Twitter. Uh, they're allowing you to take these NFTs that you have and basically connect your NFT or I shouldn't say NFT, but connect your wallet, um, your digital wallet into Facebook platform. And then from there, you can upload, um, looks like all of your NFT work that's on there that you own. Uh, you can even have your profile pick be one of your NFTs. Um, so to me, it's, it feels a little bit like Twitter. One other thing that they're also doing, um, which, you know, Instagram has already been doing this for a little bit of a while, uh, but they're actually allowing people to, you know, check out some of your digital collectibles uh, and then going ahead and putting those available to you know everyone out there so that you can uh, either view it, see it. Uh, I don't know if they allow you to purchase it just yet. Uh, again, Instagram has been doing this for a little while. Here's a screenshot of that as well. Um, but you can see all the digital collectibles, see um, how rare it is. You can also see who owns it, all that good stuff. So we'll see what happens. I don't think this has been rolled out yet. This was, this was just first, um, published on June 30th, 2022. Uh, today is July 1st, 2022. So literally just yesterday. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm not sure how the whole NFT crypto world will feel about it. I know everybody right now is kind of like in awe, in shock of how this downturn of a, um, a bear market that we're in right now. Uh, I don't think too many people are, <laughs> you know, caring about NFTs, especially, man, it's been a lot of scams going on. It's been a lot of uh, rug pulls going on. It's been a whole lot going on in NFT space. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I think people are going to enjoy having their, you know, board ape or whatever on their profile picture on the Facebook side. But I'm going to be honest, I don't think too many people use Facebook that much anymore anyway. Uh, it's really big on Twitter, really big on Instagram. So I can see that being more of a thing there. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. All righty. So now jumping into our next article here. Pokemon Go. So Pokemon Go's new social network campfire is a doorway to Niantic's AR multiverse. That is correct. Pokemon Go is now trying to <laughs> create its own social network. I honestly did play Pokemon Go when it first came out just to check it out, just to try it out. I kind of liked Pokemon when I was younger. Um, so I wanted to see what it was all about, you know, going around the whole city, uh, going around your neighborhood, just trying to, you know, catch Pokemon fictional characters and stuff like that. Uh, but now it looks like they're taking it a little bit further. They're taking it a step ahead uh, of what I could even have imagined them actually doing. Uh, they are integrating chat into their, I guess, new app called Campfire. Um, it's going to be more like a social network in which you can 
uh, actually meet up with people. So it's no longer just, you know, you by yourself going around trying to find Pokemon. Um, think of Google Maps using the GPS uh, right along with like, I don't know, Discord or something like that. Uh, where you can actually, again, connect with real people in the real world, but still be a part of the metaverse in a augmented reality sense. Um, for you Tildur folks, TLDR, what's happening is that Pokemon Go is creator Niantic is launching its own social network app, Campfire. Uh, it'll slowly become available for Pokemon Go players over the next few months. Uh, keep in mind that this is only for ages 13 and older. Uh, why it matters? Niantic's metaverse aspirations go beyond games to a future world of AR glasses. The, co the company sees its map-enabled social network app as a necessary step. What's next? Future Niantic games and even AR experiences could be connected to Campfire in the future. For now, it's its own standalone app. Uh, that comes directly from this article on cnet.com. Uh, I'll be sure to drop all of these articles as well on the description for this video. Uh, again, with being a podcast, I'll drop it inside the description for the podcast as well so that you guys can read it. I know Unfortunately, you guys can't see what I am actually um, seeing, I would say, on the podcast side. But if you go to YouTube, go to my YouTube channel, uh, you'll definitely be able to find the video there. Uh, but I did want to kind of go through the article real quick and um, just kind of give you guys a quick spiel on what is going on here. As I said, Campfire is going to be Pokemon's Go new standalone app in which people can actually go in and um, connect with each other. They can actually meet in real life. Uh, I believe there's a part of, if I can find it real quick. Um, yeah, there's a part of the article which kind of gives a spiel on what it's exactly doing. Uh, the separate app acts like a launcher or a browser for local events. So people are going to be um, creating events and also joining in on events locally. Um, and has local community groups sorted by game that can be joined. It's a way to jump into local events or even create an event down the road when more interconnected apps using Campfire start to arrive. The app shows events through a, meta, through a map in a standard 2D layout with green flares that can be sent out to indicate where something interesting is going on. Those flares can be visible to anyone playing, making a sort of heat map on local events but while they're public, they're also anonymous and they only last for about 10 minutes. The flares could be repeated by others, also forming a real-time sense of where big game events might be happening. Uh, alternatively, you could send another person on Campfire a one-hour location-based ping of where you are, but the app doesn't otherwise reveal characters or players' locations. Um, so. Be on a safe side, it looks like they are not allowing you to uh, reveal who you are. Everything is anonymous um, or you cannot just reveal to the public your actual location. Uh, that would be, you know, in the chat where you just send your location directly just to one person uh, so they know where you are, so they know what event that they uh, can find you at as well. Um, I think this is actually pretty cool. I, I, I kind of like this. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it'll all work out as far as being like a full social network. Uh, again, I'm not sure how many people actually use Pokemon Go still, but I'm pretty sure there is a big number of it. Uh, if Niantic is really ready to take this next step into the metaverse, uh, or as far as like augmented to reality, uh, I think they've already been, I mean, to me, I think they've been like the real big players in augmented reality, um, allowing for, you know, these, fictional Pokemon characters to enter into our real space uh, that we can kind of connect with through our mobile devices. Um, when AR glasses come out, I'm pretty sure they're going to be jumping into that as well. So uh, I think it's I think it's going to be pretty nice. I believe they actually said they will be also integrating that Campfire app over into Pokemon Go as well uh, so that you can kind of use them simultaneously. Uh, just like I think it's like Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger kind of started off as its own standalone app as well uh, until one day Facebook went ahead and said, hey, we might as well just go ahead and throw this right into the Facebook app, um, even online and stuff like that to be to be used by more people. 
All righty. And the last one, as I mentioned, Solana. Solana, I don't know if many people have been paying attention to Solana, but Solana is doing something really, really big here. Um, it is bringing cryptocurrency to mobile devices. So Solana Labs launches mobile platform and also reveals Android smartphone. Wow. So Solana, they're coming out with their own smartphone. Uh, it's called Saga. Uh, it's going to be basically based around the Android devices. Uh, as we all know, iOS is really, really, really big on security. Uh, so they keep a tight ship on all of their coding, all of their uh, back offices and all that stuff. So it's going to be, if Solana is able to, I would definitely tell them, or I would definitely say to them that, hey, you guys got to do some sort of integration, some sort of partnership with iPhones, um, Apple, in order to, you know, bring it to more Apple users. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody, <laughs> I'm not sure if any Apple users are going to say, hey, just because I have cryptocurrency, I'm going to switch from Apple over to now uh, Android or, um, you know, Samsung, LG devices or whatever. Um, but what they're doing is that they are actually making their uh, SMS, they call it. So let me see. Uh, yeah, so there's Solana Mobile Stack. They're making it fully open source uh, as a software kit that you can design and develop around native Android applications. Uh, this is going to be really big when it comes to making apps for uh, Web3, uh, making, you know, decentralized applications and stuff like that. Uh, I just want to read a little bit about that here as well. Um... So yeah, so Solana Mobile Stack SMS is an open source software kit designed to enable the development of native Android apps built around the Solana blockchain. The kit includes the mobile wallet adapter, a protocol for plugging in mobile Solana wallets. According to the firm, this feature will work on all mobile devices, not just Android ones. Another new feature called the Seed Vault, which is actually pretty nice because those seed phrases are very long and hard to remember. So it would be nice to have a way to actually keep them in place. Uh, but Seed Vault is a software custody solution that keeps private keys and seed phrases, essentially the passwords to unlock crypto funds and other sensitive information secure on an Android device. Um, so it's kind of be, it's going to be kind of like a hardware wallet. Um, hopefully nobody steals your Android device, your cell phone or whatever. Um, but that's another way, another form of encrypting um, your wallet and stuff like that by keeping all of that safe. Uh, lastly, SMS includes Solana Pay for Android, which enables mobile payments via the platform. Um, to me, that's actually really big. I know everybody that's familiar with Google Pay or even Apple Pay. So now they're going to have what they call Solana Pay, in which you can pay, you know, for pretty much anything um, with your mobile device um, using cryptocurrency. Uh, Solana Labs will also launch a new Solana DAP store designed for mobile devices, providing easy access to Web3 applications and wallets built on Solana without any fees at all. Uh, the SMS developer kit is available to download today. So if you guys are developers, uh, I know there are plenty of you out there. Uh, you can go ahead and check out the SMS developer kit. Start building some of these Android DAPs. Um, or, you know, the people for the world uh, so that when in 2023, when the actual uh, Solana Saga cell phone does come out, we'll already have everything in place for that. All the infrastructure will be in place. There will be a multitude of apps in, in place for it as well, uh, which will be actually pretty nice. Um, so you can also get on the whitelist um, for the Solana Saga cell phone as well. Uh, that is set to be coming out, I believe, early 2023. And if you go ahead and do that, uh, I think they're taking like a $100 deposit, which is actually not bad. Uh, you get a $100 deposit. You actually get, um, uh, what is it called? An NFT, uh, limited time or limited edition NFT for that as well. Uh, I believe the cell phone is right around the $1,000 range, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the phone is expected to have a retail price around $1,000. Solana Labs is taking $100 deposits and will prioritize Solana developers on the list. Uh, early buyers will receive a limited edition NFT marketing NFT marking the launch of the phone, which is also described by a press release as a first ticket to influencing the direction of the SMS platform. 
Um, a couple of specs about the phone is, uh, let's see, to help facilitate the spread of Solana applications on mobile, Solana Labs will release its own Android smartphone called Saga, the device which will feature top tier flagship level specs, including a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor, uh, a 6.67 inch OLED display, a 12 gigabyte RAM, and also a 512 gigabyte of storage. Um, and again, it's set to release in 2023. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love this. I think this is really big, uh, especially for the cryptocurrency space. Uh, I think this is really big for the future of, you know, getting everything decentralized. Um, I think when it comes to Web3, Facebook slash Meta, um, what is it? I think, I think social media platforms, Meta, Twitter, um, TikTok, all that stuff, all of those, they own your content. Uh, that is the basis behind Web2. You put all of your content on their platform. They can do whatever they want with it. They can take it down, what have you. Web3 allows you to be able to keep control of your content. And it kind of scares the, those you know big platforms such as Meta, such as Twitter and all that stuff, because now you have complete ownership uh, of all of your content. So I believe what this does for the cell phone space is that we no longer will have to, you know, buy strictly from um, uh, or Android devices strictly from like Samsung uh, or Google. Uh, and again, if we come out with like the Apple device and stuff like that, it won't only just be on iOS. We'll still have full control over all of our content as far as uh, what we put in these cell phones. Um, and I don't know, you know, you never know. Ethereum might come out with a new cell phone. Uh, Bitcoin, <laughs> it would be crazy, but they might come out with a new cell phone as well. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Definitely let me know uh, in the comments. Um, and uh, check out these articles for yourself. Uh, like I said, I'll drop all of the links to these on uh, or inside of the description. And then, um, yeah, check back in. Again, this is a daily show. So check back in with me here tomorrow uh, and see what else is going around around our entire digital world and how our uh, lives are being shaped and formed by all of this new technology.